All right, Sarah, I'm going to ask the question, even though I feel like I already know the answer, but is Easter tablescapes, is this your jam? Like, is this what you love? This is what I love most about Easter, is setting the table, because it's pretty, it's yes. pastel, which I love, but it also means the family's going to get together. Like, I don't know about you, but teenagers in the house, I don't see my kids very often, so this right. is our forced family fun time. I know that we're going to spend time together at the table eating, yeah. playing games, and, like, having fun together. So what's your favorite part about Easter? Oh, did Probably you hear me mention the chocolate? On I kind of did, yeah. yeah. But no, listen, it's like in terms of being a religious holiday, it is up there. I mean, yeah. it's Christmas Easter if you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. So it's always been a very big deal uh, in our house, but it is about getting together. I get yeah. to see my nieces, you know, my sister, my brother in law, and we're all together with my parents. And so it is about the food, it's about the camaraderie and the family all together, and the chocolate. <laughs> You like chocolate? I have a problem. <laughs> I have a Do problem. Know. Okay, so let's talk about setting the beautiful tables. You've had some gorgeous tablescapes oh, on this show thank for you. Easter, and this is no exception. So where do we start? Well, okay, so you need inspiration. Just like when you're decorating a room, you need a starting point. So for a table, it could be a gorgeous centerpiece. It could be a tablecloth mm. passed down to you, or it could be the dinnerware. So in this case... What inspired this tablescape were these salad plates with this sweet oh, little, I, I know. Everybody's going to so love cute? that. So they're so sweet and it, they are not to Easter, but they're grown up. They're yeah. not too cutesy. And yeah. this is something that I think that you could use all season long. So just Absolutely. keep that in mind for every other decision. We'll get back to those in a second. That's our inspo. That's the inspo. Yeah. So then let's talk about what we're going to cover the table with. I love a tablecloth because yeah. it softens the table and you can't mm. go wrong with a white linen, yes. right? So when you're measuring for your tablecloth, you want it to be about six to 10 inches overhang, so it's not puddling on your lap. So however, if you want a more formal look, okay. you can have it almost brush the floor. Ooh. And that's the fancy end. So we kind of okay. have a combination here, so we're gonna just put the fancy people at the end of this right. table for dinner, right? Yes. And uh, the it leaders does. of really... the family, the matriarchs, the patriarchs, or what have you, they can have the fancy side. But I like linen because it doesn't matter if it's a little not ironed. Right. Like that's the I look. Agree. I agree. Yeah, right? exactly. Let's you can take get it away down with a notch. It. You can get away with that. So yeah, I'm not huge into ironing, so it's oh, one of my favorites. Yeah. Can't stand it. Me neither. Okay, so we've got the tablecloth down. <laughs> You're really um, passionate about that. Where are we gonna like are we gonna build now the place? Let's settings? do it. Yes. So I like to layer in a um, a placemat that's or nice. a charger and a texture. Yeah. So that adds a little bit of color to the table, a little natural element, but it also creates a separation between the plates and the tablecloth, especially if right. your dinnerware is mostly white, you want it to pop, right? So Absolutely. that's the first layer, which mm -hmm. is great. And then, um, I don't like to buy everything new when I'm styling a table. It's not mm -hmm. practical, it's not financially, it's not good for storage, all mm -hmm. those things. So you probably have seen these on the show before, because yeah. I've had these for a long time for tables. They're a very subtle detail around the edge, but you can just bring out your white dinnerware. It's always great to have that as a starting point. Yeah. And then we're layering in these sweet little bunnies. That's what we all love having white plates is just like a baseline. So oh, you totally. use them for everything, right? Oh, bring absolutely. Whatever you need them. And then you can add color to your place setting in other ways too. So I've got this glassware nice. with this little hint of the pink for Easter, which is so pretty. These are so light too. I know, aren't they? They're so pretty. I love really the nice. detailing on them. And then I found these, which I'm not gonna keep, I swear. I'm not Sarah, gonna keep these, I if swear. if those aren't yours, those should be yours. <sighs> Who else is going to use that beautiful robin's egg blue all year? Like, this is you. Can I give you Jamie's number and maybe you can convince him that I need to more, Jamie. more flatware? I'm the bad friend, huh? <laughs> I'm like, oh, you got to buy these. I know. They're I, so good. I think you're right, though. I think so. But these are just a really pretty pop of color. And again, beautiful. you can use these all season long. I would use them all year long. Yeah. Um, so it's worth the investment, right? And it adds that sweet little pop of color. And then, of course... In our house, we make a bit of a mess. So you're going to need some napkins. Here, I'll put them here, Trace, and maybe you can hand oh some gosh. out, too. And I have these styled beautiful. into little bows for each place setting. Those are actually from Gun & Co. Nice. And it just adds a cute little element to the top of your plate. And that's Sarah's company, by the way. So yes, very, it is. very pretty things, faux flowers, napkin rings, like you're making us all civilized, right? It's pretty. It's and it's pretty. Easy. It's very pretty and simple. it's very easy and simple. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, good. So we've got it all going on. We've mm -hmm. got our beautiful place settings. Now, I know you're into personalization, but you're not going to handle that today. That's right. That's Christian's department. So we're going to leave that for now okay. and move on to the centerpiece. Let's talk about the centerpiece. Okay. What are we doing? Well, you know I love flowers, but if you're dealing with a narrow table like this or you want to have food on the table, you can't necessarily do a traditional floral centerpiece. Right. So I've come up with a, like a revisit of an old school item. Okay. So when you used to have those rings around your candles with flowers or beads or whatever back yes. in the day, I'm doing a new version of that. So what you need are candle holders of varying heights. Okay. Um, and then you need a candle, you need 
a little bit of floral foam, mm -hmm. which I've cut into a circle, and then I've cut out a circle that's the right size of the candle. Now you wanna see here, you have to have a holder that has a lip on it like this, right. so that it holds it in place. A little ledge. A little ledge. And okay. then you just start putting in some faux flowers into the foam. Oh. You could do this with real flowers too, but you'd have to soak the foam and you probably want to do it the day of. Yeah. And it would get a little oh, heavier too. Oh, and then they too. get droopy and everything's yeah. ruined. So, so this it's nice the, using the foam. Exactly, and then you work your yeah. way around. Mm -hmm. And then through the magic of television. Take your time and they, you and this is how they turn out. With Isn't that pretty? These. Oh, that's and then beautiful. You just vary the heights down the table. Yeah. Gorgeous. And you're done. Sarah, so 